We are hitting numbers that should be terrifying. I don't know why they're not terrifying to the folks on the left. Basically, they, you just saw it. They just came to the microphone saying, we want more money. Where does it come from? So, so, so let's actually walk through just some basic facts. And this isn't Republican or Democrat math. It's just math. And as the family saying is, math will always win. It may take a while, but the math will always win. So the reason for this chart, Mr. Speaker, is one more time to try to visualize this is the 2023 budget. Okay. In that 2023 budget, here's what we call discretionary spending. This is defense and non-defense. Okay, it's, we have 1.7 on this chart. It's actually closer to $1.8 trillion. This wedge over here is actually, let's just call it Medicare. Social Security still has its own trust fund, which is out in nine years. So when you hear a Democrat saying, well, we don't borrow any of Social Security, you shouldn't be talking about it. The trust fund's gone in nine years, and the recapitalization of it is brutal. But once again, our brothers and sisters on the left um, don't want to actually deal with the math because it's such a great campaign hit on anyone that actually cares about not doubling senior poverty in nine years. So back to this chart. So when you look at this, you got to understand, this Blue wedge is all we get to vote on. All the red, the 72% of spending we call mandatory is on autopilot. You get that benefit because you worked your 40 quarters. You earned your Social Security benefit. You worked you know, a certain amount. You paid into your Medicare. You're, you turned 65. You get that benefit. You hit a certain age. That is the vast, vast majority of the spending. And it's also if you go from today through the next 30 years, is 100% of the future debt. It's demographics. I say this over and over and over and over. And the idiot class around here who wants to say, no, it's Republicans not willing to tax people more. Stop it. Because I'm going to walk you through all the Democrat tax proposals and show you how little of GDP it is creates even at tax maximization. There's this concept of at this rate you maximize tax receipts without rolling over and the economy and rolling over the fall of receiving less tax receipts. So I'm going to show you the math on maximizing. It's nowhere near what the Democrats keep telling you and it's really crappy economics. So one more time, this board is incredibly important. You want to know why there's fussing around here. Dear friends, Please watch out for this. Millions of Americans have been waiting for the government to announce the next cost of living adjustment. But officials say this major announcement may be delayed due to a government shutdown. New inflation data from this month will drastically change the next benefit boost. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to learn more about this. Also, do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of today's Walmart gift card giveaway in a video later today. But if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. There is a potential delay for the announcement that over 70 million U.S. retirees and government benefit recipients anticipate each year, and that is their annual pay increase. As a government shutdown looms, the United States Labor Department has cautioned that if the government closure persists, all data gathering and publishing activities by the Bureau of Labor Statistics will seize. This is including the scheduled release of the Consumer Price Index for September on October 12, 2023. This could disrupt the timely announcement of the annual cost of living adjustment for monthly benefits distributed by the SSA. While any delay in the announcement may occur, it is unlikely to affect the commencement of the new payment amounts. The new rate is slated to be implemented for Social Security retirement benefit recipients 
on January 2024, while payments for supplemental security income beneficiaries usually change at the end of each December. The COLA is contingent on the annual change in the CPIW at the end of the third quarter. A recent memo from the Labor Department outlines the potential impact of a government shutdown on agency operations, emphasizing the connection between the delay in CPI release and the subsequent COLA announcement by the SSA. In the previous year, amid surging inflation, the announced COLA for 2023 payments stood at 8.7%. That is the largest increase since 1981. This year, with inflation slowing due to aggressive interest rate hikes by the U.S. Federal Reserve, over 65 SSI recipients and over 7 million SSI beneficiaries have experienced substantial increases in real incomes relative to inflation. This year, many may witness another above-average COLA increase, as inflation, though moderating from its 2022 peak, remains higher than the pre-crisis 10-year average. The COLA, which averaged 2.8% since 1984, dwindled to 1.4% from 2010 to 2019, with no increase in three of those years. In August, the CPIW recorded a 3.4% year-on-year increase, driven primarily by elevated gasoline prices. Despite this, the COLA for 2024 is unlikely to provide the same buffer against inflation as seen in 2023. Amidst the federal budget debate, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has proposed slashing several prominent welfare programs, aiming to achieve an annual savings of approximately $150 billion. This includes cuts to federal safety net initiatives, such as food stamps, federal Pell Grants for low-income college students, housing assistance grants, and a program addressing high heating bills. Regardless of one stance on the government's role in funding these programs, the abrupt cuts to existing welfare initiatives can disrupt the lives of individuals and families who are reliant on them. So over the next decade, discretionary spending, which includes the targeted welfare programs, is expected to decrease relative to the size of the U.S. economy. Meanwhile, Medicare and Social Security are rapidly expanding, with projections indicating that mandatory spending on entitlement programs will exceed 60% of the federal budget by the year 2030. Despite the magnitude of this issue, neither party is willing to consider significant long-term changes to these major entitlement programs. Various alternative ideas exist, such as adjusting Social Security specifics to reduce long-term expenses, permitting younger Americans to opt out of the retirement system, or means testing Social Security benefits for wealthier retirees. So until Congress considers these alternatives, the cost of old age entitlement programs will remain a primary driver of the federal government's fiscal challenges. As these programs become more expensive in the coming decade, they will continue to exert pressure on other parts of the federal budget, leading to a recurring cycle of budgetary challenges. According to Yahoo News, the current policy choice underscores the need for a reevaluation of fiscal priorities. This is to ensure a fair and sustainable allocation of resources. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. My dear friends, thank you very much for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, every Friday I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter today's giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. 
The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed day.